Hey guys, what's up? It's Rain. I'm back from vacation. I got some Mammoth coins to give away and I got some more Mammoth coins to announce for a future giveaway and to top it off to the video you've all been waiting for. Yes, the official second episode of the Brawlhalla Basic Series in fact is here and it is my complete guide on how to get you from platinum into diamond now if you watched my first video in the brawlhalla basic series we go over terminology basic attacks combos and movement now by mastering those things you should have been able to hit plat if not extremely high gold depending on how long you've been playing brawlhalla in general Boy, if you don't but so if you're not there yet go back to the video mash that video then come back to this one mash this video And then you will be able to hit diamond so coming off the rip We do need to announce our previous videos 340 mammoth coin giveaway a winner, which is Keith Sage L Congratulations Keith Sage L You are the winner for the 340 Mammoth Coin giveaway Make sure to follow me on Twitter And also contact me on Discord DM me through Twitter, DM me through Discord Let me know that you are here for the giveaway Alright guys, as always we are going to be doing another 340 Mammoth Coin giveaway on this video All you have to do is like, comment, and subscribe Comment down below how you feel about this video And other things that you like from it As well as maybe videos you want to see me do in the future Without further ado, let's get this show on the road right now. Alright y'all, so we got three things that we're going to be discussing today. And these are the three things that got me to where I am today. If you guys don't know about my history in Brahalla, I've only been playing the game for a year and a half. I've already hit a 2400 peak in ranked in this game. And I'm also a top 5 Caspian player in the entire world as well. Now, some pros and other semi-pros may disagree with these tips. These are my personal tips that I use to get me in a very short time to the rank in the area. Area that I'm at app and I can guarantee that if you follow them you will be able to hit diamond as well because it's exactly what I did too so step one coming in hot is going to be reading your opponent now understand that not every match is the same nor is every opponent ever gonna be the same you know how it goes some play super aggro others play super passive then you have the gatekeepers of diamond which I call them which are the people from 1900 elo to 1999 elo that are just really good movement spammers people that lack the technicalities and the ability to string combos and kill confirm options to where they just aren't able to get into diamond but they're able to take elo from people who don't know how to play against their certain play style which is like backdash sig i'm gonna dive into a game just show you guys a little bit of a diamond gameplay i had uh before i went on vacation here that i was watching and uh it's a really good example all right so this one right here is going to be, uh, I'm Diamond Head, obviously. That's Caspian Crossover going against this Taros here. And you're going to see in the beginning, a big thing I do in every match is that I always pl I play to read my opponent. I play to read my opponent immediately, and I try to see if they're super aggro, if they're super passive. So as you can see here, this Taros is obviously extremely aggro, and he just begins to absolutely clap my cheeks. We can just fast forward through all this. He absolutely dominates me. Just huge sigs, super aggro, doing doing dash sigs off edge, everything. Literally takes out my stock with barely any damage I did to him. So now I'm in a rough spot. And right then and there, a big thing that I was doing wrong was that I was not having good enough movement and I was not getting out of his super aggro area. Now, now that I know he plays super aggressive, here's where you're going to start to see me switch things up a lot and I'm going to start playing very counterintuitive to his aggro. All right, so off the rip now, he's still up one stock, two stocks. We'll just let the video play here. We'll go from there. Huge four string weapon string right now. I'm still trying to catch a vibe, a little bit of his movement. See what he does. I know he does sigs. So I'm like, all right, let's just see if I can out sig him. I'm still getting, I'm still getting hit from his sigs, but without even being able to do more sigs to him, it's looking real bad right now. He basically has a complete two stock lead off the rip. But now what I'm starting to do is you're starting to see I'm playing very counterintuitive. I'm not going for super aggro stuff, but I'm backdashing out of attacks and movements, and then going in for a counter attack each and every single time. That was a beautiful read on recovery right there as well. So like I said, this is for someone that plays super, super aggro. Now, obviously, a big tip, too, that's going to come in hot is weapon starving. Understanding that, okay, this guy relies heavily on SIGs. And if he doesn't have a weapon, he obviously is not going to be able to SIG. So what am I going to do? I'm going to out SIG spam him. I'm going to hold stage control. And then I'm going to be able to play counterintuitive to him outside of his weapons. 
Beautiful. Beautiful Ensigoth Thrift. So I'm still down two stocks here. And this is what's going to lead up into the second part of the game chat, which is the mental game. And this is by far the most important thing of all in Brawlhalla. Being able to keep a clear mind and avoiding ranked anxiety or pure rage. Tips that I do are breathing exercises and also listening to certain songs while I'm playing as well. Now right here, I was down two stocks against the six spamming Taros that was hitting some crazy reads. He was doing really good. Uh, just so you guys know, this is this is a ranked gameplay. Uh, probably around, it's probably around like 2080 ELO, 2100 ELO. I'm not playing to give him an advantage and I'm weapon starving the shit out of him. And I'm building as much damage as I can without putting myself in a vulnerable position whatsoever. Now notice again, I'm letting him land but I'm still, I'm still playing, I'm playing out of his zone to where I'm able to hit him, but he's not able to hit me. I hit a beautiful read, and just like that, my mental game has stayed clear, calm, and cool, collect. And now the tides of the battle have changed a lot. Now he's playing super aggro, as you can see here. He's frustrated, he's mad, he's literally attacking me with every single move nonstop, and he's playing perfectly into me countering him now. You can tell his mental is hurting. His mental is hurting dramatically, and I know this happens to a bunch of you guys a lot because it used to happen to stuff like me each and every single game until I finally figured out, you know, like, wait, I don't have to play super aggro. Wait, I can just counter people. Or, oh, this guy's super passive. Okay, I can mix up weapon throws and counter the hell out of him too. And just like this, you guys are seeing now, I'm literally not getting hit at all. I'm not getting hit at all, and I'm forcing him to have to play out of his comfort zone and not have to be super aggro. Otherwise, he gets punished, which he's been this entire time. And that's how you do it, folks. Literally a three-stock reversal comeback off the rip, which is just absolutely savage. So that's one of my ranked games from there. And that really ties into just, uh, you know, number one, reading your opponent again. That guy played super aggro. He was a big spammer. And so what do you do? You want to get stage control. You want to be able to hold the weapons. And you also want to be able to not react to every single attack he does if he's gonna hit you with a sair and keep throwing out sairs every time you don't have to throw out a sair to counter it you don't have to instead you can move your body into a position where that you can end with like a nair or a dare or literally a gcn sing whatever you want whatever you want that's a big thing in this game is understanding you don't have to trade attacks every time someone attacks that's a huge 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 step so reading your opponent step one and then number two again is the mental game and the mental game I, I, is by far the hardest thing in brahala it's one of the biggest things i struggle with uh, specifically getting mad i get i i struggle with personally i rage from people who play extremely overly passive that like make my ranked games be 10 minutes long but it, it's how it goes it's the way of the game and you got to do what you got to do to win and when you guys start playing a pro tournament stuff like that which anyone can play in pro tournaments by the way sign up through smash gg you'll start to understand that you know people play however the hell they feel they have to play to win games and that's just the reality of it that's really the reality of it and until you can beat people who play these certain play styles you know then they're gonna keep using it against you it's still gonna bother you all right number three though number three is the next thing that we're gonna go into and you know what we could just dive into another replay here but the third tip I have that is going to get you guys in a diamond is to think ahead. You know, when you play, begin to imagine what your opponent is going to do based off what you're going to do, then counter slash react to that. So I know that sounds super confusing, but we'll show an example here. I'll actually go into training, all right? We'll go into training real quick, and I'll break down you guys exactly what I mean about doing this. If I know my opponent doesn't have a weapon and he relies on using weapons what i mean by that is he won't he won't try to aggro me with like a gc end light or a gc dare he won't try to hit me at all with unarmed so basically what he's gonna do is he's gonna play around and he's gonna avoid until he can get a weapon once he's finally able to get a weapon that's when he'll start to play more aggro so what does that mean right then and there that means like okay i want to have stage control and i want to try to build up as much damage as i can against this player without letting him get a weapon no matter what so that's number one, right? And that's a big thing. A lot of people absolutely struggle so heavily with getting weapon starved. And I, I'd say it's probably one of my biggest advantages that I can give myself in a match is being able to weapon starve someone. I'm thinking 10 steps ahead. If you know someone has, let's say, uh, let's say someone is super red. So let's say this guy, we'll just get this guy super red. All right, let's say he's got super red health. So that when you spawn right here, you're probably gonna look for an immediate kill confirm. Now, by going for an immediate kill confirm, he's probably going to either A, jump up, B, dash out, C, play edge guard here, or D, just try to dash through and avoid you altogether. So now, that's step one, right? 
but now you've thought step two where you're thinking what he's going to do. So now you're thinking step three to counter what he's going to do based off what he thinks you're going to do. So I know this sounds like a lot, but I'm telling you it's huge. So now instead of playing super aggro into him, right, what you'll see people do is, like let's say he's standing here, I go up, I dash, I don't attack, right? I don't attack, I'll back dash, and then I'll jump and I'll do like a, a, a ground pound off that, right? Where like as most people would just run and they do this. And then what the person will do is they'll read it, dodge, and then end light you off the rip too. Whereas what you're thinking is now this third step ahead is you're going up based on this. So he dodges, right? He sees me running at him. He dodges. And meanwhile, what I do is I come up here and I hit a literally a break dance right here off the rip. So that way it's going to cover his dodge here. It's going to cover him if he jumps. It's also going to cover if he jumps in as well. And it's going to cover if he tries to dash through to block it as well. So by doing that, that's what we call a wake up. It's a wake up and it's a very good kill confirm option. Another one that's really good obviously is going to be your uh, your uh, your D-Light ground pound. That's a really good one for edge guard too if people are playing off the edge here. And honestly, a lot of people expect it, but it's really, really hard to avoid because if you go for the D-Light ground pound right here, so you hit this, and then you, let's say you hit this, right? And then you hit them with the ground pound, they're dead, right? Or if you go to hit this, because they're here, they're right here. You go, to, <laughs> you go to hit this, and they jump this way, then literally all you have to do is hit them with the Sair. All you have to do is hit them with the Sair, and they're dead. And then after, if they, let's say they dodge the Sair, then you just, then you just rotate into them, dare, and then they bounce off this, they'll be like here, and then you get more stage control again. So those are just one of the many examples. There's so many ways to differently apply being able to read your opponents and stuff like that, but that's my biggest advice and the best example I can give you guys about thinking you know, a minimum of three steps ahead about what your opponent is going to do. So quick recap of everything we just covered within today, all right? Number one, reading your opponent, okay? Understanding that not every match is gonna be the same, not every stage is gonna be the same, Every opponent's not going to be the same. Some play super aggro, some play super passive, and others are just crazy sig spammers, and others are people that just abuse the shit out of one or two moves on a Brawlhalla legend that they use as well. And that's okay. Understand that that is okay. That is okay. You're better than that, and it's really easy to beat people who are a one-dimensional player. The reason why is because you're going to go into step two, which step two is your mental game, which is by far the most important thing in Brawlhalla. Being able to keep a clear mind, being able to stay calm, being able to avoid ranked anxiety, not get pure rage from people that piss you off by playing a certain way, and you're going to do this by you know staying calm, taking deep breaths, or playing certain music that keeps you calm, cool, and relaxed, and understanding that, you know what, it is what it is. It's okay if people play this way. It is. I know how to beat them. I can do this. I know how to play differently to do it, and I know how to succeed. And then number three, the way you're going to succeed is by thinking ahead. Thinking a minimum three steps ahead. So recapping what that is. Thinking what you're going to do in a situation. Then thinking what they're going to do based off you doing that in a situation. Then you thinking of what you can do to counter by doing what they think you're going to do and countering that onto them. I know it's confusing, but when you play the game enough, you'll start to understand. And you'll start to hit a lot of things in which the pro players call reads. Other stuff like that, okay? So counter, react your players, keep a strong mental, and always read your opponent. And understand that no two opponents will ever be the exact same. I love you guys to death. I appreciate you guys all so much for everything y'all do. We got another 340 Mammoth Coin giveaway coming in hot. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this video to enter. Let me know how you guys feel about this video. I know it's a lot to take in, but I also know there's so many of you that have been begging me for this video for such a long time. And I'm happy to be able to finally bring it out to you guys as well. Obviously, the next video that's going to be going up in this series is how to go from you know diamond into semi-pro the next level which i'm not even semi-pro yet but i'm close i'm close i'm on my way so once i get there that video will be coming in off for you guys as well and i can't wait to see how you guys hit diamond i love y'all to death win some mammoth coins talk to y'all soon ba -ba -ba. peace